all that have participated in the Army tests in which you are particularly interested in on the subject of LSD, the entire list of those individuals plus their volunteer agreement has gone to the Surgeon General. I really wanted to dive into this topic because the entire field of psychology is just so fascinating to me. And while there are a lot of theories out there about how governments use psychology, today I want to walk you through some of the studies that we know happened, why they were developed, and what, if anything, we've learned from them. During the 1950s and 60s, the US was involved in the Cold War, which if you were unaware, was a period after World War II when two ideologies, communism and capitalism, were battling for global positioning. On one side, the US and its allies, and on the other, the former Soviet Union, now Russia, China and their allies. At that time, the United States feared that the communists were using mind control tactics on their soldiers who were being held captive in North Korea. And so, in 1953, the head of the CIA, Alan Dulles, greenlit the MK Ultra project with the goal of running experiments to figure out how they too could control an enemy's mind using a combination of drugs and psychological techniques. Over time, the MKUltra studies began to be known as one of the government's worst abuse of power and disregard of basic human rights. In the more than 150 studies performed as part of the CIA's MKUltra project, they attempted to develop mind control techniques with a combination of various psychedelics like LSD, MDMA, otherwise known as ecstasy, and psilocybin. They use stimulants like methamphetamines and barbiturates like heroin. Additionally, they exposed some of their test subjects to electroconvulsive therapy, and even experimented with paralytics, such as anesthesia. It's reported that these studies were conducted in the US and Canada on prisoners, students at university, and even hospital patients. Although we are unsure as to how many people were in the experiments, since not all even knew that they were participating. I mean, can you imagine not knowing that your physician is dosing you with psychedelics? How terrifying. One of the studies within MKUltra that we know the most about was Operation Midnight Climax, which took place in San Francisco and in New York City from the years of 1954 to 1965. In this twisted experiment, the CIA employed prostitutes who lured men to safe houses where agents then dosed them with LSD using food, drink, or cigarettes. Then through a two-way mirror and with recording devices hidden in the rooms, CIA agents observed the men's behavior. They reported that all but one man who was high on LSD gave them more information than they expected. But ultimately, after 11 years of study, the results of Operation Midnight Climax were deemed inconclusive, as LSD was found to be too unpredictable to be used in counterintelligence efforts. Next, we have what is commonly referred to as the Montreal Experiments. They too were funded by the CIA and conducted between 1957 and 1964 by Dr. Donald Cameron, at the Allen Memorial Institute of McGill University in Montreal, Canada. These experiments were reportedly started as a way to cure schizophrenia through what Dr. Cameron called his psychic driving technique. He claimed that this technique changed memories and erased his patient's thoughts. These reported results are what probably attracted the attention of the CIA and MKUltra which if you remember, was created with the goal of developing mind control techniques. Dr. Cameron's unorthodox and controversial methods included electroconvulsive therapy, sensory deprivation, and drug-induced sleep using Thorazine, which is an antipsychotic medication. Once asleep, he would inject patients with LSD and then play these pre-recorded audio tapes to them over and over sometimes for up to 16 hours a day. Of the 300 known subjects, some were previously diagnosed with schizophrenia, but many others suffered from other mental illnesses such as anxiety or depression. 
And all of the subjects signed up for these studies in hopes of seeing some improvement in their symptoms. Instead, the majority experienced retrograde amnesia. Some regressed to a childlike state having to relearn basic skills, and many even having to be potty trained again. It was devastating. Overall, we don't know how many people were harmed by MKUltra, but we do know that the majority of studies occurred between 1953 and 1964. And in 1973, the American government was under extreme pressure due to the negativity surrounding the Watergate scandal. As a result, then CIA director Richard Helms abruptly shuttered the MKUltra program and ordered all related documents destroyed. They did, however, accidentally overlook some 8,000 documents. And that's what people have been using to piece together what actually happened during the MKUltra experiments. Even though the studies themselves were halted, the permanent damage had already been done. A few individuals even decided to sue the government for the trauma and pain they endured. And I couldn't find any documentation to find out if they won their case or not, but I really hope that they did. And that was the end of MKUltra. Or was it? From 1955 to 1973, the US Army Chemical Corps conducted classified human subject research at the Edgewood Arsenal facility in Maryland. They were looking for chemicals that would have similar psychological effects as nerve agents, but with less lethality. When pressed, the US government stated that the studies were conducted so they could develop new pharmaceuticals, protective clothing, and vaccines for the soldiers in the field. Along with testing mustard gas and pesticides, they also tested psychoactive agents like LSD and PCP. Over 7,000 military personnel and about 1,000 civilians were subjects in this experiment. And they were each exposed to roughly 250 different chemical agents. When reading about this on the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs website, they stated that, and I quote, Long-term follow-up was not planned as part of the DOD studies. The National Academies of Science reviewed the potential health effects from these experiments and did not find any significant long-term physical harm, except for some veterans exposed to larger doses of mustard agents. In 1975, they brought the director of the program, Dr. Van Murray Sim, before Congress, where he was chastised for his methods and lack of follow-up care. These people, specifically that they were going to be uh, exposed to a drug like LSD and what the effects of that might be on them? Well, let, let me answer that, sir, in, in, in two ways. For, for instance, the literature on LSD contained about at least 1,000 references by 1960. Today, it's uh, it's it's four times that amount. Now, m most of this, of course, was done in entirely outside in the open, uh, in universities and nonprofit institutes, both here and in other countries. So this is nothing new. One of the things that you do not tell a subject is for when they go on any type of drug test is you cannot tell them specifically what that chemical is and you cannot, for purposes of the test, tell them everything that they might experience because that is an individual thing. And secondly, you're prejudicing the experiment by leading them into suggestive uh, thoughts about it. And they were all told that they were going to undergo a, t a test with a chemical and that they were told approximately the amount of time uh, the duration of the test, what the test procedure would consist of, whether they would get it by mouth or otherwise, and were told that it was a drug that might influence their behavior. He and his team were forced to notify all subjects and volunteers of the exact nature of their chemical exposure. They also awarded some financial compensation to a few families who lost loved ones as a result of the Edgewood Arsenal human experiments. And in the end, Congress dismissed Dr. Van Murray Sim because they didn't believe there to be any long-term harm to the over 8,000 subjects involved. 
Psychology in and of itself isn't inherently bad. In fact, what I talk about on YouTube usually focuses on the positive and helpful aspects of it. But as you can see, when it comes to developing military tools, it appears as though there are no limits to what a government will or will not do to be a leader in the field. Beyond that, the hardest thing for me to get over was the fact that I was unable to find any evidence that these studies rendered results that were then used to help our troops. And yes, I know that much of the documentation was destroyed, but wouldn't you think that they would be excited to share the positive side of their over 150 studies they performed? Especially if they wanted to avoid any more negative press. Up next, we will be moving into how some businesses use psychology to get us to spend more money, possibly on things that we don't even need. So stay tuned.